Today's topic, how to make a woman desire you. And this episode is inspired by Dr. Jordan Peterson. When it comes to making a woman desire you, I tried it for years by promoting myself as a good boyfriend, by being the perfect nice guy, and by fulfilling her every wish. But here's what I should have done. I should have been a dangerous man, I should have been altruistic and selfish, and I should have listened to Dr. Jordan Peterson. Eventually, I came to the same conclusion as the quite popular psychologist. When you really think about it, a couple of years ago, nobody really knew Dr. Jordan Peterson, just a few people who were following his YouTube channel. But things have changed quite rapidly, especially nowadays where everybody knows clean your room and so what you're saying is... And Dr. Jordan Peterson actually knows more about female nature than some of the best pickup and dating coaches in the world. And one of my early mentors, he said something very interesting that, yeah, that's very similar to Jordan Peterson's analysis of what women like in men. He told me, look at erotic novels and you know what women desire. And these words came out of the mouth of a 42-year-old man who back then he had a girlfriend who was 24 or something like that. I don't remember if she was 24, 23 or 25, but a girlfriend who was way younger and way prettier than he was. And he knew how to attract women. And I mean, he still knows it up to this day. But this sentence, look at erotic novels and you know what women desire, this stuck with me. And then I heard Dr. Jordan Peterson talk about werewolves and pirates. Here's what he said. Women don't even like harmless men. They hate them. They like to claw them apart. What women want are dangerous men that are civilized and they want to help civilize them. If you really understand this statement, you can't possibly believe in the just be nice rule. I mean, let's have a look at what the Google engineers actually discovered when it comes to the archetypes that women are attracted to. Here's the list. Vampire, werewolf, billionaire, surgeon, and pirate. In the clip in which Jordan Peterson lists these archetypes, the audience was laughing and you could really hear that the women in the audience tried to hide their approval behind the laughter. They were like, oh yeah, you got me there. Let's hope that my laughter makes me appear clueless and innocent. <laughs> and when it comes to these five archetypes, I actually want to add a couple more. I want to add the artist, the secret agent, the husband, yes, the husband, the knight and the adventurer. And I want to discuss these archetypes now. On the one hand, I want to discuss the archetypes that Dr. Jordan Peterson mentioned. And on the other hand, I want to show you the five archetypes that I decided to add to the list. And I want to show you how you can make a woman desire you by becoming a man yeah, who's in alignment with these archetypes. Let's first have a look at the vampire. Be dangerous like a vampire. Why do you think Twilight was such a huge success? It's not because the lead actress has the emotional expression of a stone, that's not the reason. I would say that 99% of the audience care about the guy who played the vampire and maybe also about the guy who played the werewolf. Because True Blood and Vampire Diaries and Twilight, I mean Twilight not so much, but especially True Blood and Vampire Diaries show you that women desire vampires. And why do women desire vampires? Because vampires are fearless, but yet they are vulnerable. They are loners but yet they are romantic. They are selfish, but yet they are very sensitive. Every woman is addicted to this ambivalence. She wants a guy who selfishly pursues his goals. And the same guy has to be selfless and romantic when he's with her. She wants a guy who needs nobody in his life but her. But she also wants a fearless man who's vulnerable when he's with her. Now let's have a look at your transformation to a werewolf. Werewolf are gentlemen in public and beasts at night. They are torn between good and evil, and they are untamable but loyal. Remember what Jordan Peterson said, what women want are dangerous men that are civilized and they want to help civilize them. If you use eye contact and polite words in a way that, yeah, that communicates sexual attraction, but also this gentleman attitude, that's what women want. That's the polarity women subconsciously crave for. What about loyalty? Women want to tame the wild animal. Remember, they want to civilize the guy. Now let's have a look at the archetype of the billionaire. If you carry yourself with the pride of a billionaire, you will be way more attractive to women. 
And now I can already hear you screaming, all women are gold diggers, it's just about the money, I knew it. Not so fast. If money was all you needed to create desire in a woman, I wouldn't have so many wealthy coaching clients who struggle with getting laid and with getting a girlfriend. Women desire billionaires, but not because of their billions. It's about their qualities and characteristics that actually made them the billionaire. Unless this guy has inherited money, just like this Australian dude, or is he from Australia? I don't remember, like Travis Bainon, this guy with the candy shop mansion Instagram account. Unless you really inherit money like this guy, the typical billionaire has worked his ass off. He has confidence and presence, he's hardworking and extremely focused, and he follows his path without making excuses. And all these things are extremely desirable qualities. What if you want to be selfish and altruistic like a surgeon? When I discovered that women are totally into surgeons, my first reaction was, what the beep? Yeah, I don't know, I didn't really understand it. But when I really thought about it, it makes complete sense why women actually sexually desire a man who slice other human beings. It's because surgeons are extremely hardworking, they rank very high in the dominance hierarchy, and they save lives. Women want men who selfishly pursue their path, but who also have this altruistic attitude to help others, to save others, to lead others to a better life. And this combines this altruistic attitude, this leadership characteristic, and also this selfishness that women are looking for in a man when it comes to pursuing your goals and your dreams. And the last of these five archetypes before I discuss my own list that I added, that's the pirate. If you lead her like a pirate captain, and no, I don't mean like Captain Jack Sparrow, Captain Jack Sparrow, getting drunk and burning down your own ship and then running away with your hands in the air is not a good leadership technique. Let's have a look at a really good, strong pirate leader. Let's say pirate captain. Yeah, I already said it. Pirate captain is the same as pirate leader because he's the leader. A pirate captain expects loyalty. A pirate captain makes all the decisions and the crew follows him. A pirate captain protects his crew with his life. Be the pirate captain of your own ship and she wants to be your crew. I mean, think about it. Loyalty. You make the decisions. You're the leader. You protect her. These are all the qualities that women dream of when they imagine their ideal boyfriend. And now I want to quickly discuss the five archetypes that I decided to add. Maybe you think it's complete bollocks. Maybe you think it makes sense. Let's see. That's the artist, the secret agent, the husband, the knight and the adventurer. Let's first start with the artist. Why do you think Pablo Picasso had his last child with a woman who was decades younger? Artists are attractive. And artists, no matter if rich or starving, have something that most men don't have. They are passionate about their work and life. They express their deepest feelings in a non-needy way, but in a confident, expressive way. And they paint mental pictures. And this is basically what a good seducer, or let's rather say a great seducer does. He's passionate. He expresses his feelings without, yeah, without landing in this needy friend zone trap, but with a confidence and with a, yeah, you could say confident vulnerability. And a great seducer paints these beautiful images that make women want to follow him and that make women want to be seduced by him. What about the secret agent? Looks matter, but not in the way you think. Whenever guys hear looks matter, they think they have to run to the gym, get steroids or plastic surgery or some stuff like that. But when you really think about it, looks for a guy are more about the way you dress and the way you present yourself. Think about Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan, and yes, even Daniel Craig. These guys have style and class. They are British gentlemen and they, yeah, they wear tailor-made suits. They wear clothes that represent high status. And this is something that women crave. Now let's have a look at the weirdest archetype, if you can even call it an archetype. That's the husband. And no... It's not a joke. But unfortunately, the following thing is one of life's bad jokes. According to a study, 90% of single women were interested in a man who they believed was taken. But only 59% of these women wanted the same man when they were told he was single. That's a realization that a lot of my married friends made way too late. Now that they married, because they thought they could never get another woman, because they had this one-itis, because they were trapped in the scarcity mindset, suddenly they realize, oh damn, now that I'm married, women want me. I could have other women. But do you really have to get married to make use of this biological loophole? 
Thankfully, you don't. You just have to get the same approval. Surround yourself with beautiful women, talk about the women in your life, and show that you have options. Let's have a look at the archetype of the knight. And no, I don't mean the white knight. I mean a real one. I don't want you to start your career as Captain Savo. <laughs> That's what a white knight does. You should be a real knight. You should protect her from the dragon. Maybe even from her inner dragon. You should listen to her when she's singing for you. You should be the armor that she can rely on when the castle burns down. And these are extremely attractive qualities. Now let's have a look at the last archetype. That's the adventurer. And in this sense, I want you to be unpredictable like an adventurer. Why do you think Indiana Jones always gets the kiss even though the woman obviously hates him? Because he's doing what he wants to do, he doesn't take any orders from anyone, and he's unpredictable. And women love that. Women want men who are unpredictable, who follow their path, who do what they want to do, and who don't take orders from anyone. And if you want to become an adventurer, then you have to check out the link in the description and rise like a phoenix from the ashes. Because once you've read the first chapter of my book Rise of the Phoenix, or if you decide to listen to the audiobook version once you've listened to the first chapter, you will know how to have a lifestyle that turns you automatically into this desirable, adventurous seducer. And yeah, if you decide to take your dating life even further, you can also check out the second link in the description and book a Skype coaching with me or book a one-on-one -on -one in field coaching with me where I show you how to approach women directly in field. I give you feedback. I listen to your conversations and I kick your approach anxiety directly in the balls. And if you enjoyed watching this video about how to make a woman desire you, then please give it a big, big thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know which of the archetypes that I shared with you is the one that you can identify with. Or maybe you also want to add your own archetype in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And I would love it even more if you would hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, and then I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Audio jump.